Hi everyone, this is Liz with Edmund Designs, and today I'm going to be walking you through how I make my mini ski girls. Here are a list of supplies. You'll need to have a mini doll body already made, so if you don't know how to do that, you can look at some of my older videos, and I'll leave some links below. Okay, so first we're going to make the ring for the hat, and to do that, I'm actually taking the inside tube of a EOS chapstick and a thin strip of cardstock, which is about a half, maybe smaller, a half a millimeter thick. And then I'm just going to take a small piece of tape and I'm going to tape it to the inside of the strip of cardstock and then I'm going to place it on my tube and just wrap it around the tube twice making sure that it sticks to the tape and then when I brought it around the second time that's when I'm going to trim it and fold the tape over. And I've seen some people do these without wrapping it around something. I just found this to be an easier method for making the small hats, especially for the mini dolls, which have a wooden bead size of a half an inch. So then I'm just going to trim off any excess tape and we can start with our embroidery floss. I'm going to take my red embroidery floss and I'm going to wrap it around three of my fingers and then I would say it takes at least half a skein if not three-fourths of a skein. So I just cut it in half and that will give us the pieces that we need. And you can see I already had some short ones there, which I found to be too difficult to work with. So it looks like we've jumped back, but this is when I first started with the smaller strands of embroidery floss so that you get a, a close-up view of what I'm doing. So you're going to fold the embroidery floss in half and you're wrapping it over the band and threading it through the loop. You want to make sure that you're starting with the ends and by that I mean if you're you'll notice that once you've gotten a few on there that if you look at the other side there are these knots it, it 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 looks different so you want those knots to be on the inside because it looks like there's a lot of space right now but once you get enough of these on your your band it's going to fill up and it's going to hide all of that white so just keep going and if you do them all backwards, it's not a big deal because you can just flip it around. Basically, you're flipping the hat inside out before you've tied it. So it doesn't matter which way you start doing it. It's just about being consistent and make sure you're doing it the same way. Okay, so we've skipped ahead and I've got my ring full. And I'm just um, moving the strings so that the knots, I'm just kind of rotating them on that ring until they're in a better position because I'm going to tie a piece of floss around to, to, to the top. So that's what I'm doing here is I'm just 
working them until I feel it looks right. And then I'm taking one of my strands of floss and I'm just going to double tie it around and it kind of naturally goes where you need it to, if that makes any sense. So I double tie it here and then I'm actually going to wrap it around again after I've done that and it makes the tip of the hat even smaller and tighter. And then once I have that done, I am going to cut off the top of the hat and start shaping the little pom-pom. It's a very forgiving material, so just work at it a little bit at a time. And I find this part is very difficult to mess up. So once you've finished trimming, you'll have a little hat that looks like that. Next, uh, we're going to work on the skis. I have a little template that I've made after doing these a few times, but I will show you the measurements. It might be difficult to see, but I have uh, the end is rounded and the back is flat. And these are um, wooden stir sticks that you can get at Walmart or any craft store. I guess they call them skinny sticks at Walmart. I don't know about the dimensions on the stir sticks like that you can get in the grocery aisle. I assume they're similar. Um, I find that these are a bit wider than what I wanted so I actually do trim them a little bit. But if you're using a ruler what you can do is they are one and a half inches so I'm just marking there and you're gonna round that in and I'm just taking off a little bit of the side I don't even know the measurement it's minute um, maybe I would say it's like 132 of an inch again it's just me being picky and your skis will look perfectly fine without doing this so once I have my um, skis sketched out then I just take a pair of wire cutters and as I'm clamping down I rock back and forth and that is that works for popsicle sticks and um, even the tongue depressor, the larger um, sticks, like the tongue depressors like they use at the doctor's office. Um, so this, I cut off both ends and then I'll go back in and trim um, the front part of the skis that are supposed to be rounded so I don't have as much to sand off. So once I have them cut to size, like I said, I'm going to go back and do that trimming. And then um, when I sand, I use a nail file. But if you're using sandpaper, especially, um, you know, a coarser sandpaper, it's you're not going to have to do this. These are, it's a very soft wood. And it doesn't take any time at all to sand them down. Like I said, I'm being nitpicky, so here I'm trimming the sides with my box cutter. And then I take the nail file and just round those edges. And smooth out any parts that need it. And then I'm going to take this acrylic paint from... Um, Walmart 
I'll leave the colors down below. And you only need to coat this once. I find that two coats aren't necessary. The wood soaks it up pretty well. So I'll paint one side and the edges, and then lay it down to dry, and it's usually dry in about 10 minutes. So I can work on the ski poles or something else while these are drying. And I'm going to use this same color for, um, it's what's called the basket on the ski pole. And this is a grunge paper by Tim Holtz. You can find it in the scrapbooking section. It's paintable. Um, so I've painted both sides of the section of grunge paper. And then I'm using a hole punch to punch it out. But you can use cardstock instead. Just whatever it is that you have, you're just going to use the hole punch to punch it out. And then I'm taking a yarn needle and I am poking a hole through the center of it because that is what our wire is going to run through. So I'm going to make sure they all have holes and then we'll get to the poles. Okay, so I'm going to take a cheap bouquet. You can get these at Walmart or the Dollar Tree. I got these at the Dollar Tree. And you're going to want a bouquet that has the, like, thick covered wire, which I think the majority of them do. And I'm just going to take my wire cutters and I'm going to cut the ends so that I have a flat surface or a flat edge to work with because they do have rounded tips usually. And I'm going to measure at two and a quarter inch. So that's two and one fourth inch long because that's how long our poles are going to be. And I'm just going to use the other as my guide. And I'm cutting four because I was working on two dolls. You will only need two of these poles. Then I'm going to take my wire cutters. I'm not cutting in all the way. I'm just cutting enough to remove the outside plastic casing and I find that they can only be removed in small sections not as a whole piece so you'll have to cut at multiple um, places to remove them. Now we're going to take those casings that we just cut off of the wire and you're going to take them and measure them at a half inch. You can trim them with the wire cutters or scissors. And we're actually going to take those and glue them back on to the wire. And these are going to become the handles for our ski poles. So I just take a little bit of my tacky glue and um, I usually put it out on a piece of cardstock or glass. I'm just going to dip my wires into it and reinsert them. You might find that a few pieces don't want to work, so it's always best to have a few extras just in case. Then I'm going to take this acrylic paint from Walmart. It's the Apple Barrel brand. Again, I'll link it below. Um, it's just a dark brown and I'm going to paint those handles so it doesn't matter what color the stems are on the flower bouquet that you pick up because you're going to paint them anyways and then I lay them over something to dry so that the handles don't stick to anything okay after your handles have dried you are going to dip the tips of them in your tacky glue again and this is where we're going to put on the pieces that we hole punched. This is called the basket of the ski pole and yes I did have to look that up. I don't know these things off the top of my head and I am not athletic in any way. 
especially not in winter. So anyways, that is how you get the baskets on your ski poles. Here I have my doll body already wrapped. Um, her leggings are red and she has on a long sleeve white top, but I kind of wanted to show you guys how I'm doing the boots. So I'm putting on my tacky glue. I've opened up my feet and then I'm just wrapping around so that when I close them, the tip of the foot is wrapped because no matter how hard you try, if the feet are already closed, it's pretty difficult to get them wrapped. And if you're unfamiliar with wrapping the dolls or some of the basic techniques, I recommend watching Emily Leffler on YouTube. I will link to some of her videos. That is how I started out was by watching her and she's very good for the basics so I use one boot as the guide for the other but again like I said I just kind of wanted to show this so that you could see how I was working on those boots once you've done the hair in a basic just long straight hair and I cut it about at the waist. I'm going to glue the hat on using tacky glue again. You can use hot glue. I just find it a very irritating glue to work with. Especially on these dolls. It's very easy to see your mistakes. And then we're going to open up her hands. I'm going to put in a little bit of the tacky glue. And then I'm going to close her hand back around. And then you can adjust the arms and hands even after you've glued them in. Of course, it's a little bit easier beforehand, but it can be difficult to tell until you've actually got her holding them what kind of position you want her in. And then I'm also going to use tacky glue, as you might have guessed by now, <laughs> to put her feet onto the wooden skis. And I don't recommend it as a glue for um, heavier dolls that you're trying to keep on a platform. That's when I use hot glue. So it worked just fine. You don't really have to hold them uh, for very long though. The um, stir sticks are so light that they they instantly stick and you don't really have to hold them or mess with them after that. I am just being particular about their placement. Then I'm gonna go through the ceremonial showing off of the finished doll because I think that I'm done and I've forgotten the scarf. So we're going to work on the scarf, which I would highly suggest doing before you have put on the skis or put the ski poles in her hands. It makes it a lot easier. But here I'm just using some um, t-shirt yarn that I made and didn't know what I was going to use it for and it came in perfect for this. But as an alternative, I would recommend a thin strip of felt. That's what I've used on my other dolls for other colors. And you're just gonna wrap it around and I like it placed with both strands hanging down in front. But I mean you can play with it um, and do a different look. And then I just trim off the ends so that they are even and hang just below the sweater and I think that makes it look really cute and then after this is when I turn them into ornaments um, but you can leave them like this and do whatever you like with them so that is it I hope you enjoyed thanks for watching